Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This week, I've got four topics I wanna to talk about, and this is week 41. And the first one, I wanna talk about Unifly. Unifly is going to become the UTM provider for Canada. They're going to be providing airspace uh, management for Canada. The next one is an article about from DJI that talks about the actual cost of remote ID and what they think it's gonna be, and it looks like it's gonna be a lot more than what the FAA is telling us. The next thing is coronavirus is going to affect production of a lot of UAS out there, so we'll talk about that. And the last one is finally the end of remote ID. You're gonna think, yes, we don't have to hear about this anymore. Well, yes, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, 51,000 comments, so now what's gonna happen, and uh, I'll discuss the process on this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing this week is I wanna talk about Unifly. Unifly is a European company. And actually, if you've been following me for the last uh, week or so, you saw that I posted a podcast with the CEO of Unifly where we talked about remote ID and how they're going to do remote ID in Europe. So if you haven't watched it, I recommend that you go and take a look. There's a lot of really good information there. But Unifly is in the news because uh, they're going to become the UTM provider for NAF Canada. Now, NAF Canada is the nonprofit company that is in charge of the airspace in Canada. Um, a little bit different in the US. In the US, the FA is in charge of the airspace. In Canada, you have the equivalent of the FAA that's still in charge of the airspace, but they provide uh, the, this access to the airspace is provided by a third party called NAF Canada. And NAF Canada is going to partner with Unifly to help integrate drones into the airspace. So Unifly has a UTM system that they're gonna be using. It's an app very similar to what you use in the US for your uh, lance request. And, uh, and that's what they're gonna be putting in place. So again, if you haven't watched the podcast, learn a little bit more about uh, Unifly and learn a lot more about how actually uh, they have a, a solution that actually works that they've implemented in Europe and are going to be implemented next door in Canada. The next thing I wanna talk about is the article that DJI published. Now, DJI published a lot of articles being very critical about the NPRM for remote ID. And the latest one was talking about the actual cost of what uh, remote ID is going to be when implemented, if implemented, as proposed in the regulation. And what DJI is saying is basically the cost is gonna be about nine times more than what the FAA is telling us it's going to be. DJI posted an 89 page comment. Now I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't read the comment yet, I haven't had the time to do this. I would like to see what they're saying. Uh, I have seen a lot of their posts recently and I know there's been a lot of uh, lashback at, uh, at DJI, but quite frankly, I think they're on the right side. They do want uh, to make a change to this. Now, if you're against remote ID entirely, then sure enough, you're not gonna like what DJI wants to do. I am not against remote ID. I think that remote ID is a necessity in certain situations that has to be said and um, and I think not everyone needs to be uh, and there again if you haven't read the, the listen to the podcast with Mark the the CEO of uh, of Unifly then uh, you'll get a better idea of when we should have a remote ID and when we shouldn't so with that being said uh, if you look at the, the the comment from DJI and kind of uh, the the article that I listed down here they talk about the fact that this might cost closer to about ten dollars a month instead of two hundred or uh, two dollars and fifty cents which is what the FA is telling us to have access to a USS a, a UAS service supplier which is going to be providing this remote ID uh, data collection and then providing it to the FA so uh, $10 a month is a lot for a lot of people out there. They're just flying uh, a drone for fun. And uh, this is gonna be an additional cost. I'm not even sure if this $10 a month is for one drone or if you have several of them, then what it's gonna cost. So a lot of unknowns still with this uh, whole remote ID thing. Not a whole lot of fun. The next thing I wanna discuss is the coronavirus. I'm sure you've heard about it, right? It's everywhere in the news. Uh, the, it's affecting the production of drones. And, uh, and the reason is because a lot of these parts are manufactured in China. And for example, uh, Skydio, which is creating the Skydio 2 and also creating their Skydio Beacon, they sent an email to their customer base this week saying that there would be production delays because while the drone is assembled in the US, the parts come from China, a lot of the parts. And so they're gonna have production delay because of this. DJI said the same thing. Now we haven't seen any production delay yet from DJI, but they're saying that it could happen down the pipeline because 
Well, because parts are, uh, because the, the, the production facility are shut down right now because of the virus. So this could affect a lot of things, batteries, gimbals, cameras, propellers, you name it. Everything that's attached to the drone basically is gonna be manufactured in China and then sent over to the US to either be assembled or the entire drone is already assembled. Um, with that being said, it looks like the virus is finally slowing down in China, uh, spreading across the world. It changes every day. So, um, But uh, the, even if it slows down in China, the ripple effect is going to take quite a few months to catch up because the demand is still there. So. The last thing I want to talk about today is the NPRM. Yay, it's finally over. Uh, March 2nd was the last day to submit your comment. Interestingly, I woke up on March 3rd to take a look at how many comments were submitted, which was 51,000 comments, and uh, found out that uh, there was actually still a comment button. So I clicked on it and actually submitted a comment and uh, to test it, and sure enough, it went through. So. Uh, it looks like actually this morning I woke up again, today's the 5th, and I get an email from the FAA every day telling me uh, if comments were submitted or if there were changes to the NPRM. And it actually looks like there was more comment put in on the 4th. So I have no idea how these comments went in because the button is no longer available, so you can't comment. So I wonder if these were paper comment that were uh, converted and put into, the, um, into the, the website, I'm not sure. But with that being said, the next step from here the FAA is going to review all the comments that were submitted. They have to reply to the comments. I know some of you don't believe that, but they have to read them. They have to reply to them. And um, they're not going to reply to each of every single one individually. They're going to look at the ideas. And then if there is enough people that made comments about the idea, then they will address the idea and talk about uh, why they're uh, going to continue what they're doing or why they're changing the regulation. So. Needless to say, this could take a few years, and I have my expectation it's gonna be at least a year, possibly two, for this to happen. And then from here, they're going to publish the final ruling. When the final ruling happens, then we will have three years to comply with the regulation before a remote ID becomes a requirement for everyone flying out there. So I'll continue to monitor what goes on with remote ID. I'm sure you will hear more about remote ID. I'm going to tell you the same thing that I told a reporter on the phone last week. Uh, this, because the comment period is over, doesn't mean that it's, it's time that we stop talking about remote ID. We need to continue the discussion because uh, because the FAA is still listening. The FAA is made of real people, believe it or not. And these people are watching, they're reading articles, they're, they're listening to the community. And, uh, and the more we talk about this, the more we try to offer uh, solutions that actually work, the more the FAA is gonna be willing to make these changes. That's my opinion, okay? Um, not a legal opinion by any means, but we need to continue the discussion on this because it's, because it's important. It's going to affect all of us in the long run. This is all I have for you today. Um, I hope you have a great week. Keep flying this weekend. Uh, next week, I'm actually uh, going to be recording quite a few things. I don't want to talk about them just yet. If you're a student in the course, then you will be getting some uh, really cool updates coming up very soon. So uh, that's all I have. Fly safe, and I'll see you guys next week.